Hello everyone! So it's been a while since my last video, but I wanted to show you my latest collection and then do a little project after I do the preview. So to start off with this collection, you'll get 10 of these designer pages. I just, I was so inspired by what my mom did with her uh, envelopes in her letter diary that this is kind of what gave me this idea to create this collection and she's working on something new which I can't wait to show all of you um, she's using a lot of this collection so if you're wanting to create something similar to what she's doing then you can purchase this digital collection print everything out and once I show it you could create something similar to what she is doing. And, you know, with spring coming, uh, I thought that this was a great collection to do for kind of a spring-summer collection. <laughs> I was in Montana, and it was, you know, it wasn't bad up until I got there, and then it started snowing, and, and as soon as I left, I guess it got super-duper cold, like 20, 30 below zero, so... Um, yeah, I got back to Phoenix just in time before that winter storm hit. And these, once you cut them and fold them, this is how they will look. So very simple. It's just two folds and then you get your large envelope. Now on these, I did fold in the top part, as you can see there. And you can cut those off if you want to you know, have kind of a tapered uh, flap there. That's up to you. You could just leave them straight. You could corner the edges, it's however you want to, to create them. But I wanted them to be simple uh, to where it wasn't a lot to create the envelope. It's just, you know, going to glue your two sides and then you have your flap. And then you can stick inside uh, I will show you here in a little bit what you can put inside of these. Um, but you'll get the five large envelopes. And as you can see, I like to do lots and lots of layers. You know, and you if you wanted to, you wouldn't even have to, you don't necessarily have to use these as envelopes. You could cut these little sections and use them as flaps for your journal pages if you wanted to, or you could create pockets with them. Uh, so, you know, there's multi-use uh, things that you can do with these envelope designs here. So you get five of those. All right, and then you'll get five pages of the stained receipts. And I tried to make everything so it was easy to cut out, nothing, you know, too complicated. So you get five of those. So if you cut these, like for example, let's just cut one here really quick. I'm actually going to use my, um, I don't want these scissors. So I'm going to just cut along here. Kind of give it that torn edge look. Or kind of a Distressed edge. Okay, so you have your receipt, and as you can see, once you have your sides glued down, it will fit perfectly inside of your envelope there. And then, like I said, I need to cut my flaps, but Anyway, you'll get the idea of how those work, and again, you'll get five pages of the stained receipts, 
And then you'll get 10 of the background papers or coordinating papers. Well, let's get you more of a close up view there. Okay, so there are the 10 coordinating papers that you'll get. Oh, there's one more. Okay, so you get four of the paper dolls. And I have these all cut out so you can kind of see how they look when they're all cut out here. And there was a lot of little ephemera that came on it. And I did that so you could decorate envelopes and stuff with. So you'll see. Like there's all these little pieces of ephemera that comes um, with some of the paper dolls there. So this is how those look, these paper dolls. I should show you how these look before I uh, refine them or... <laughs> add my magic touch to them uh, just so you can get an idea of the work these take so much time to uh, to do the faces and refine everything and just make it clear and make the resolution so much better than you know what it is originally because the you know these old cabinet cards and old images the resolution is so poor that it just takes lots and lots and lots of time to get them, you know, to where <laughs> there. It's pretty much like repainting the face is is basically what it is. Repainting the hair, face, some of the dress elements. Sometimes I add in a dress. Uh, sometimes I change out the face, add in hair. So, you know, it's it's a lot of work. Um, and that's why I only did four, is just because I, the time that I was taking to do these. So what I might do is I might work on some more. And if I do, I'll do a free update. I think you guys might have seen, if you've purchased in the past, where I've done a collection and then you'll receive an update. And anytime I update a collection, so whenever you purchase it, uh, you'll get the update. Uh, for for as long as the digital collection is around or I'm around <laughs> for for as long as I'm around to do those you'll get two cards or you could use these as pockets so these look like this when you have them all cut out so you'll get four of them and you can make these little cards and I have matching envelopes, so the envelopes, they are sized so they fit these perfectly. So you can have your card and envelopes and you can make a little set of them. Or you could use them as little pockets, like this, and just, you know, Stick in whatever you want in you know in that pocket and then put it on your journal page and you could even create a cool pocket flap for your journal page as well with these and then you know the back is already done so you have a nice decorative back as well so you know you could use these as cards or as a pocket and you'll get four four of those so they look like this on the page. No, I just try to add in some stamps, little fillers. So I do try to fill it with some stuff. And the tabs, let's see, I cut those out. So the tabs, what I do is when I cut these out, I just cut each side, 
cut the top, cut the bottom, and then I fold it and then cut out that middle section there. All right, so four of those. And then you'll get the matching envelopes. So again, those envelopes will look like this. And again, easy to cut, it's just a square. And then for your notches, you could use your scissors or you could even use probably a hole punch or something like that. And then, so that's how those will look once they're cut out. So you get four of those. Then you will get the four pages of washi. And I did these so that they would be two inch strips, two inches in height, and then the width is going to be, you know, around eight and probably like eight, eight, well, about eight inches. <laughs> okay, so there's four sheets of the washi. And I will show you how I created my washi with these. So what I did is, here's a sheet that I printed out. This one I kind of messed up because uh, I didn't smooth it out and you can see the wrinkles on this piece here, but most of them turned out really pretty. And how I do this, how I created this washi, is I, <laughs> this is the backing to some shipping labels. So I found that it works perfect for uh, making washi tape. So what I do is I take my, this is the surgical tape and I have a link down below where you can purchase this from Amazon and it is the two inch in height and I did create the designs to be two inches in height so you know it would fit the tape perfectly and all you have to do I'm going to show you how I do this is I have the backing of my shipping labels here oops yeah okay make sure there's nothing on there. Okay, so I I come down about an eighth of an inch and then place that first strip down. And this is where you want to make sure that you smooth it out. Otherwise you get wrinkles. And then I just take and fold that edge back so it will hold the tape in place because uh, it really slides around on the backing of this and in order to secure it down you have to wrap it around that back there otherwise it'll probably jam in your printer. So there's the first strip and then I do the bottom strip next and again, about an eighth of an inch up because you have that white border when you print. And so, you know, I found that if you go about an eighth of an inch up from the top and the bottom, it works out perfectly. And again, just make sure you smooth it out really good. So you don't get the wrinkles because you don't want them to have wrinkly faces. <laughs> okay. Oops. Okay. 
And then I'm just going to do my next two strips here in the center. And I'm just barely spacing it. And, you know, when you do print this washi tape out, it goes a long way because uh, there's so much of it. It's a whole page, and so you can cut it and use pieces of it, and so it will, you know, like I said, it, it will go a long way. Okay. And the last piece will fit perfectly in there. And this was the one that wrinkled on me because I didn't... If it overlaps a little bit like mine does, it's that's fine. It will not impact it at all. Okay. Okay, so after you have it all nicely smoothed out, then I'm going to run it through my printer and I will be back to show you how beautiful this looks after it's printed on the tape. So as you can see, it printed out perfectly. It did not jam in my printer. And look how easily it comes off of the backing. It just glides right off. And now I have my own washi tape and it coordinates perfectly with the collection that I'll be working with. Okay, so I wanted to show you the difference of how these looked printed on parchment paper versus the white presentation paper. Just to show you, if you want kind of more of a vintage look or some, you know, kind of that copy stained, look without having to go through the trouble of coffee staining, you can print these on parchment paper. And that's the difference you'll get versus printing on the white 32 pound presentation paper, which I like this, this paper. It really brings the color, makes it vibrant, this presentation paper. So again, if you're not wanting to do all that coffee staining and you're short on time, but you want that coffee stained look, really simple. You could just print it onto this copper parchment paper. All right, and I, yeah, I just wanted to show you that really quick. So you can see here, you know, it just gives it a lot more of this vintage look. Here's the difference between that one and that one. And you know, it would be interesting to even see, I have all this color paper, pastel, like green and pink, and I might even try printing on those just to see how it might look. Uh, you know, kind of experiment. If you have a lot of extra paper laying around, colored paper, uh, you know, might give it a try and see what different effects you can get um, with the different colors of papers. But, you know, it just gives it that vintage look. And then you can see with the ladies even, just beautiful vintage effect there. So, that is the new collection. I have it up on the site. If you have uh, subscribed to the newsletter, you'll see the coupon code. You'll get the freebies. Um, so if you want to subscribe and you haven't yet, it's pretty simple. You just go to my homepage, dreamzetc.com, which I'll have listed below. And right on the home page, or you should get a pop-up, you can sign up for the newsletter. Okay, so let's go ahead 
now that I've shown you the latest collection, uh, let's go ahead and have some fun with this. I'm going to make my envelopes. So if I follow this little guide here, if I did 10 by 10, so I have to do 5 by 7, and okay, so I score at 4 and 1 8. So starting from the left, 4 and 1 8. Okay, so after I have my measurements for my piece of newspaper, and with this I just cut a square of newspaper. I didn't really pay attention to, you know, the words or pictures or anything because the paper is going to be all covered. And so I just wanted to grab a large enough uh, section of the newspaper to make my envelope with. Now, you could use grocery ads. Uh, you could use any sort of advertisements that you might get in the mail. There's a lot of things that you could use if you don't have newspaper laying around. Uh, great things that you can recycle. If you don't have any of these things, then you could use maybe some of your copy stained papers or copy paper to create your envelopes. So I'm just using my envelope punch board here to make my envelopes and then uh, we'll just Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to take some acrylic white paint. Now I got this from Walmart. It was pretty cheap for this big bottle. And I'm just going to do a light white wash of this paint over my newspaper envelope. And when you're painting this on, you don't have to be real neat about it as you can see. You're just going to paint on a light layer just real quick like just enough to cover up enough you know so you don't see a lot of the text or pictures and then I'm just going to let these dry and set these off to the side and get ready to do the next step so while I'm waiting for that to dry I just thought I would show you my little pup here well, actually he's not a puppy he's like six years old but he's my little chihuahua his name's da Vinci but I call him Vinci and he just will not look into the camera <laughs> he might be a little camera shy I don't know here he is you can kind of see his little face there my little cutie pie I'm going to make some washi tape and what I have here is the backing from my sticky shipping labels so I kept the backing here and then I'm going to use this 3M surgical tape and I got this off of Amazon I'll have the link down below on where you can get this but I'm going to take and just place some strips you know it'll pull up easily from this backing and it won't stick to that backing. Wrapping a little bit over the other side just to make sure it holds in place because it really does not stick to this that well and I don't want it to jam inside my printer. to see how this looks oh it's perfect okay okay and so before we start to decorate the envelopes I just want to score those fold lines really good on my uh, newspaper envelopes here and again if you don't have newspaper you could even use like grocery ads or something like that or just regular coffee stained paper if you like I need to do my corner there. Okay, and now I'm just going to glue down those side flaps and 
then we can start to do the fun decorating part of our envelopes here. And this, you know, this is just, again, another great way to use up some of the newspapers or ads or things that you might get in the mail. So there are our envelopes. And now I'm going to take some of that washi that we made and start with some of that to apply to my newspaper envelopes. And I just love how this washi tape turned out. It just, it's a great way to decorate something super easily. Put this lady in that space there. Just try to piece it. taking my secret stamp here. <laughs> Sounds kind of funny. Uh, it's not really a secret stamp. It's just that's the name of the stamp. <laughs> and I'm going to just I think stamp sections of this onto that other envelope there just to kind of start the collage process of my envelopes. I'm just gonna give her a little crown and then I'll use this wording and then right where I have this I don't know what happened there this fold I'm just gonna kind of Fill this in a little bit to make it not as noticeable. Put in some of this yellow here. Okay, and next I'm going to take some of my diamond wrap. I haven't used this in, in quite a while actually, but I thought that little pieces of this would work perfectly just to add that little bit of embellishment to the crown there. I love my white glue because it works on quite a number of things and it does not take long to dry. I just use that little bit there. I think I'll do that. I'll just make this little corner, I think.
people you love, trust, love. Joy. Ode to beauty and knowledge. Kind of like that. So after I found my sentiments from the newspaper, I'm just going to cut some of those words out and collage them onto my envelope here. Okay, so as you can see, our envelope is starting to come along nicely. So you can see where I did add in a few sections of some trim, and now I'm just taking some scrap trim that I have and just cutting these really thin pieces of trim, just again, to add that little bit of, of texture to the side of my envelopes there. Just take some of the stickles and go right along this edge here. Gold wax and just maybe add a little bit of the gold on some of those edges. So I think I'm going to call that one good and I might just take and rub some of this just on the other side and I might do a little stamping on this flap here a little bit too. go I love it I love the way it turned out now I think I need just a little stamp work here a big sentiment or something is kind of what I'm thinking that would be perfect I think well you know I think I'm gonna do one of the, the pieces of ephemera I'm not sure if this came in the freebies or not. If 
you know, if it, I'm going to go back and look. If it didn't, if it's not in the freebies, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some more receipts to the Letter Diary digital collection. So for all of you that have already purchased it, when I go and I make this change or do this update, I will click on that option that I have for all of you to receive the update and so you'll get the additional receipts uh, sent to your email and so just kind of look for that because um, I think I am going to add a little bit more to that collection. And then I'm just taking some of my spun sugar distress oxide and blending around some of those harder edges from where I cut my ephemera and just kind of blending it all throughout my envelope there. Old. Let's for some texture again. Right along here. I'll put that on this. It just kind of ties in with that wording that I have there. So I think I'll add this and then I'm going to call it done for, for real this time. <laughs> All right. There we go. So there is one. Use this to fill that space. Now, if you guys like this trim, let me know. I'll see if I can get some more of it. And if I can, I can uh, offer it on my site. Let's see, maybe like so. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to put this going this way. Right there. Kind of like that, too.
the one thing I love about washi is usually if you decide to move it, you can usually do that. And I think I'm just going to move this up and get her entire face. I think I'm going to piece it together like I did that other envelope instead of just having the bottom showing there. So I'm going to move this up to right about there, I think. And then put the rest of her. Ode to, I don't know. Ode to heart. <laughs> inspiration. I like inspiration. I'll put that there. Now, you know, if you don't have a newspaper and, you know, you're not finding sentiments like I am, then you could just type uh, a Word document and print that out and use, you know, letters that way. I just happened to look out because the newspaper I was using has all these wonderful positive words in it. kind of just uh, doesn't stick out enough, I don't think. So, okay, so I'm just going to add a little white paint down in this section here. just to kind of make it stand out a little bit there. And I'm just going to glue that down onto that wet paint. Alrighty. This 
still have this up here. You know, I might take that blue flower, actually. And maybe go like that. Other paint. So here I'm just taking some white paint and just kind of painting around some of those harder edges just to kind of make everything flow a little bit better and give it more of that uh, cohesive collaged look there. Okay, so just kind of blended that in a little bit more. That's all I did there. And then this really stands out now. Okay, I need some texture. I want to add that right there maybe. Then I have this spot right up here, so I have to think of what I'm going to put there. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking some of this extra washi tape that I had torn off and just really piecing little, or tearing off little pieces just, just to give a little bit of added color and then I'm going to use this extra piece of trim that I have. I, I just, I have a bag full of, you know, like little cut pieces of trim and that's perfect for these collaged envelopes. But I'm just, you know, looking at where I have some of these white spaces that I want to fill in. And uh, I thought what I would do is finally pull out these new Iron Orchid knob topper stamps that I started to carry and I have been really wanting to use this stamp set and I think I'm going to use that stamp that says Paris. I think the words are perfect to fit in that little space that I have there. And so I'm just using a color of ink close to that red just I want to accent a little bit more of the red onto my envelope so I chose a pinker reddish colored ink to to stamp with and you know I got a really good stamp impression with this stamp but you'll see here in a little bit where I wanted to I don't know what I was thinking really <laughs> I took and I guess I wanted to make that Paris text stand out a little bit more so I took one of my markers there and just kind of added a little black. I, I think I was just trying to tie it in with the other stamp and I didn't end up liking it so you might want to skip this step and then to make it even worse I took my Distress Oxide <laughs> and I went over it and just I ended up smudging it but the effect that I got from it, it, it looks more like a, I guess, more like a um, postmark sort of stamped image. 
when I did that. But, you know, in looking back at the video, I wish I hadn't had done it and I wish I would have just left it alone after I had stamped it. But, you know, that's just one of those small details that I kind of picked up. <laughs> and I think we tend to see things in our artwork that others probably wouldn't even notice. But I did want to kind of point that out. So if you do duplicate this project, you know, you might want to skip a few of the steps that I did. Now, again, I want to take some of my scrap pieces of trim and just add those because I like that added texture to my envelopes. I think it adds so much. And then I'm taking those sentiments that I cut out earlier and I'm going to add those to the top flap of the envelope. And I really love this whole concept of taking and recycling newspapers, making envelopes with them, and then the additional part of cutting out these sentiments and adding them as well. I, I just, I think I'm going to do more of these, and so hopefully you can expect to see another video where I continue to do more of these envelopes and show additional ideas. Uh, I think I might take and get out some of my embossing folders and maybe do a little embossing like my mom did with some of her envelopes. Um, it's something I would like to do, but my, my schedule is so busy. I have all of the design work that I have to do for Blue Fern and Carabel, and so my time gets really limited for being able to play in the studio and, you know, be able to do these videos, but I do... Uh, I always want to do more videos <laughs> if I have the time. And I'm just going to finish everything up with adding in a few more pieces of the washi tape. And then I think I'm just going to uh, finish it all off with a little bit more of that Prima Gold Wax. And I do have a lot of my Prima Waxes back in stock. so. Uh, I ordered quite a few, so those are available. And again, on some of these trims that you see me using, I think I might do another trim kit. I've done two, and both did really good. I sold out of both of them pretty quickly. Uh, so I'd love to hear your comments if you would like for me to do another trim kit. Uh, I would be more than happy to do that for all of you if you're wanting to um, use a lot of the same trims that I'm using on these envelopes here. And I do my best to <laughs> try to get a lot of the same trims. If for some reason they're not available, then I try to find ones that are very similar uh, to what I'm using. But yeah, let me know and uh, I'll do another I'll do another trim kit if you're all interested. And so I'm just adding these few little pieces of trim to finish it up. And again, uh, using the washi tape, as you can see, it's just a great way to decorate. But it still allows some of that newspaper print to come through. And I think that's one of the reasons why I loved using the washi tape on these newspaper envelopes so much. And then I'm just going to take that gold wax again and apply those to the edges. I even go over the trim with it. But as you can see, it just gives it that finishing touch. And it you know, is of course inspired by the look of those letter diary envelopes that my mom did. These were a lot of fun, and I hope you all enjoyed this project. Again, I'm going to try to do more, just maybe try to find a day to have a little bit more fun and create more of these. And I hope that this inspires you to try using up some of your newspapers or your grocery ads, whatever you might have laying around, uh, things that you might get in the mail and recycling them to create envelopes like this. Cause I think that, you know, I, I think these are a lot of fun. 
So yeah, be sure to leave me a comment. Let me know. Let me know if you plan on making envelopes like this. I absolutely love to read through all of your comments. Again, I do read through all of them. I don't have time to reply to all of them, but I do read them and I would love to hear your thoughts on these. It was a start. We got two envelopes done. I think when my mom did hers, there was 20 some <laughs> in her letter diary, but you know, this will get you started. And uh, I would love to be able to have the time to do more of these. So I'm hoping that I'll, maybe I'll have a chance to use some of those embossing folders, maybe even get out my dies and add in some die cuts. I don't know, we'll see. Or I have the paper dolls from the new collection, all sorts of things that I would love to uh, try um, in making more of these envelopes. Okay, so there are the finished envelopes for this project. And again, thank you so much for watching. Leave me a comment and we'll catch you back with the next video.